The following is a Shaw TV sports presentation. Welcome to Rotary Stadium in Abbotsford, British Columbia for the BC AAA Boys Rugby Final on Shaw TV. It's Carson Graham from North Van against the hometown Yale team, who are actually the visitors because of seating, but they do get the hometown advantage with the crowd. Uh, this is your broadcast team for today. I'm Paul McClellan, joined by Paul Horn today. Now, Paul, we got the BC Final AAA. How big is this matchup? Well, this is what everybody shoots for. It doesn't get any better. Uh, every team here has gone through the process of playoffs and uh, made it to the top. And uh, now they just got to finish off and get it done today. Uh, you got to get it done. Now we're watching the AAA final right now. The Quad A just finished up. It's a bit of a step up for BC Rugby. Can you tell us a bit about the different levels? Well, I think the biggest difference is the uh, private schools against the public schools. And the private schools both won uh, first and second place in the Quad A. And they have no boundaries. They have no catchment areas. They can recruit. And they have some terrific young players. Many go on to play for Canada. The public schools. They're the ones that have the kids that live in their neighborhoods and come and uh, full credit to the coaches to get them to this far. Full credit. Now let's take a look at the road to the final. First for Yale, how they got here. There you go, tier one matchup beating South Delta 13 to 12. That was a tight one. And the semifinals, Yale coming out to a big win there, 23. Yes, you know, they uh, they got to do the same thing now. They've got to do it again. They just got to do it better if they're going to beat this uh, team from uh, North Vancouver. Carson Graham is loaded and they're a very good team. And what are the keys to the game for the Lions today? Uh, possession. They got to make possession. They got to play with discipline. They cannot give up the ball and uh, make their tackles and put some points on the board. It's a simple game when you break it down in those four areas. It's a simple game. The coach kind of told me something similar. Let's check in with him right now. All right, coach, big game, the final. Do you treat this one any differently than you would any other game in the season? No, I don't think so. You know, it is a big game, but the boys are uh, prepared. We started February 1st, and we've been working towards this all season. And uh, we had a team meeting yesterday to go over a few things, which was a bit different. But other than that, I think we're uh, ready to go. Uh, defending champs, you got new faces, though, this year as you get in high school. Did the guys take some experience, the ones that were there last year, when you had it was a rematch of that in the final? Yeah, our grade 12s will uh, have that experience, um, but we do have a lot of grade 11s playing that weren't part of it last year, and so they're very excited. And, of course, a little bit nervous as well. Um, and I'm sure Carson will be gunning, too, because of last year as well. And you saw Carson Graham earlier this season, but what is the game plan this evening? They have a big physical side, and uh, we're definitely undersized, so we just got to make sure we get up there, take away their space, uh, try to stop their big boys from uh, rambling on through us, and uh, try to use our speed and see if we can get by them. Thanks very much, Coach. All the best. Got to stop the big boys from Carson Graham. Now let's take a little look at how Carson Graham got here to the final through this tournament. Check out those scores. There you go. Big win over Belmont, 55-0. And then uh, going on again against Mullet. 36 to 7, just steamrolling over the competition, eh, Paul? Yeah, you look at those scores and you uh, it's pretty obvious they can score and then get across the goal line quite a bit. And uh, you look at the defensive end, it makes it pretty difficult for the opposition to score against them. So they'll, the, the Yale they'll, will have their hands full today against this Carson Graham Eagles team. How will Carson Graham pull out a victory if they can today? Well, they just play their pattern and keep it going and uh, do the same things, only just do it better in the final. Now let's check in with head coach Greg McKinnon. All right, coach, big game, the final. How do you get the boys ready for this one? Oh, we've been pre preparing all year for it. I mean, it's kind of like a big process starting from day one way back in February. So, you know, our goal holy time was always quad A. We didn't get it, so switch gears uh, and just keep the guys moving, keep them motivated. Some tough battles with uh, Yale in the past 12 months or so. What's the game plan for this afternoon? I just kind of crash it up with our big boys in the middle of the field and try to expose them out wide. That's typically how we go. And, um, you know, unleash Quinton James, our big star number eight player, see if we can get him running on the outside on these guys, hopefully for some big runs, big gains. Well, you mentioned one of your star guys there. Are there any others? Who do you think we need to really watch out for tonight? You're expecting uh, big stuff from. Oh, big stuff. Uh, Killick is a, another one of our key guys, our captain at number nine. Uh, Nick Gray leads us from front as a prop. And then bunch of great grade 11 guys that are just stepping into roles replacing injuries uh ryan leskew liam clark you know too many guys to name they're a good good, good group of kids thanks so much coach and uh, best of luck today 
All right, the table is set. Do not go anywhere. We've got your BC Secondary School Rugby Union AAA Boys Final coming up after this here on Shaw TV. Born in Liberia, they said I'd never walk, talk, read, or write. But their words, I took as just another challenge. I pushed past every doubter, every excuse, every obstacle that stood in my way. Help the Rick Hansen Foundation make Canada accessible for all. First leg, it's the smallest one, it's really cute. The key tag money that people donate went towards the swim leg, and then now I can use it for uh, swimming and cross country skiing and skating. It makes me feel good about myself to be able to do things that everybody else can do. It's where you live. Shaw TV, your local voice. Welcome back to Rotary Stadium here in Abbotsford for the British Columbia Secondary School Rugby Union Triple A Boys Final. It's going to be a doozy out there. You can see the Carson Graham Eagles in white and the Yale Lions in blue. Starting out on our broadcast, uh, Yale will be to our right. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Top seed Carson Graham against the number two seed Yale. They're both very accomplished squads. A lot of history with Carson Graham, but Yale are the defending champions. Yeah, there's a lot of good players on both teams. And uh, if you look at that Carson Graham squad, I don't know if it's the white jerseys that makes them a little look a little bigger. And I think they are a little bigger. Uh, they have some big names out there. Quentin James, number eight for Carson Graham, comes from a pretty good lineage. His dad is one of the most capped players in the history of uh, Canadian rugby. And uh, he's a man to watch there in the lineouts, in the open field. And uh, uh, also Nick Gray, uh, their number one, their loose head prop. He will uh, he will be a factor out there in the scrummage in the set piece and uh, gets around the park pretty well. Um, looking over at the Lions, uh, they got a very good scrum half who's actually uh, a BC player, but he's going to be playing number 13 today, Connor Byron, uh, son of the coach, uh, Greg Byron. And uh, they also have a very good uh, number seven in Cole Barker. A lot of these guys have dads and things and brothers that have on, gone on to the Abbotsford Rugby Club as, as Carson Graham. A lot of those guys feel... Uh, go into the Capilano Rugby Club. In fact, the head coach of the Carson Graham Eagles is a captain in the Capilano Premier side, uh, Glenn McKinnon. Now you've coached rugby quite a bit. How do you get the guys to calm down heading into a final like this? Well, you know, they've been uh, going since the 1st of February. Yeah. These guys are, uh, both teams are well coached. Uh, they've been here before. They understand the uh, the uh, the winners takes all and uh, both teams are well prepared. Uh, they're They're and here's the national anthem. <clears throat>
Beautiful day out here in Abbotsford. We had coverage earlier this season of the Stadium Series. It was practically a monsoon at Swan Guard Stadium that night, but the absolute opposite today. Pristine conditions for both squads here in the final. So just to recap, both of these teams did make the Triple A final last year as well. Uh, it was an early lead in that one for Yale. They came out to a 12 nothing lead at the first half, end of the first half. By the end of it, it was 17 nil, and they took the BC title, the first for Yale in the history uh, of their school. Carson Graham, though, quite a history, though. The boys have won in 1996, 2002, 2006, and 2008. Their girls squad, though, has been absolutely dominant. Nine of the last 13 BC titles. I guess that doesn't include this year's, though. Uh, Yale with a good showing in that one. You know, you look at these teams and, uh, and Yale coming back and Carson has been a perennial strength in uh, high school rugby for years. And there's a reason for that. They they perpetuate their programs. They're, they're not all laden with grade 12s. Both teams have about seven or uh, six or seven grade 12s on the team and some grade 11s that'll learn from those guys and step up next year to bring in the grade 10s. So that's the balance you need to, to win and be competitive year in and year out. Both these programs are perfect examples of that. Getting ready for the kickoff now. Carson Graham in white, as I said. Now, I suspect that Carson Graham's probably going to kick off here and put it 10, 15 meters down the field looking to regain possession. Let's see what happens. Perfect kick. And there's... Far side. Starting things out, Yale. Excellent defense there. We got an offside line. Maybe that's why he was able to make that tackle coming up a little too fast and uh, penalty awarded to Yale. So they've got an option here. They can kick for the sideline and take the field advantage and go for the line out or, well, that looks like what they're gonna do. Connor Byron with the kick there. Captain of the squad. Connor's also the son of the uh, Yale coach. Leadership qualities in the family. Absolutely. Good gene pool. <laughs> nice folks. We were chatting with them before the game. Good turnout here in the stands as well. Here we go. Ball back into play. Line out. Good execution of the line out, good possession there. There's our first line break of the day by the Yale number 10. Nice drive going here. Breaking down across, Connor Byron. Another penetrating run by the uh, Yale forwards. Yale now working it out to the far side. Hitting some of those big bodies down the middle. Lines getting pushed back by the Eagles right now. That was a great come forward tackle there by the Eagle number five. Ben Cameron wearing five for the Eagles. Yale putting together some pretty good phases here. That's about seven or eight phases in a row, maintaining possession, and that's what you're gonna have to do against this team. Just straight ahead attempt there by the Lions. There, taken down. 
Byron now kicking it. Pretty good tactical kick in behind the wing. Let's see what Carson does here. Under pressure. Back it goes and up comes Byron. Ball keeps finding him. That was a good job there by Byron to keep the ball in play and not get knocked out of bounds, maintaining possession by Yale. There goes Raddins. Penalty there against uh, Yale for coming over the top, losing their feet. All arriving players in this game, both sides of the ball, have to come in through the gate. Quinton James kicked that one up. Both number eights wearing the surname James. We'll try to identify them by first name as well. Carson Graham looking to do something with their first run of possession here. Nice line break there by number 12. Nice moves there. There's another penalty against Yale for possibly getting another 10 here, not being 10. Sachser. Referee's playing advantage. Nicholas Gray taking charge out there, picking up the ball. And Quinn James going to take the ball and put it into touch. Just missed. Up the field comes Byrne. Yeah, referee's called it back. I don't think he um, went through the mark. Let's we'll see what his hand signals are here. You should be able to tell what, what the calls are just by the hand signals from the referees. So he's giving him another chance. And he didn't find the touch line. So Carson Graham on the attack. Number 12. Byron there. Getting lots of distance, working his way through. Or sorry, wrong side of the sheet. Lescu there. Not coming through the gate there. Assisting players got penalized. And Yale's got another option. Outside their 22, there's most surely going to take the uh, kick to touch and try and win the line out, gain some field advantage. Lescue's counterpart partner with the 13's Byron there with the kick. That was a good kick there, Paul. He put on put about 20, 25 meters downfield and put them into the attacking zone and took the pressure off them just outside their own 22. Line out into the hands of Cole Barker. Good heads up play there. Barry Stew to the back of the line out. Referee playing advantage again here with his hand signal. Here come the Lions. Dejiani working his way down the field. He's got room. And there's your first try. The Lions strike. Five zip. That's a great run. Good job. Get moving the ball out wide. Put the hands in the Put the ball into the hands of the person most likely to score the try. That's pretty simple stuff when it's done exactly like that.
Just working his way wide here on the near side of the broadcast. Now for those people who don't know it, when you score in rugby and you touch down, you bring it straight back and you can bring it back as far as you like to kick that uh, conversion and uh, it's worth two points and, and uh, I think most of our followers have been seeing their sons play long enough that they know that but uh, also the, other, the opposition as soon as the kicker makes a motion forward they can they can charge it. Don't see those getting blocked very often. Jaden Ned here with the attempt for two. Now he just moved forward without getting the referee's permission. They could have charged that ball. He's good there. Seven nothing lead here early before the 10 minute mark in the first half. Your BC AAA boys rugby final. Still lots of time in this one though. Again, you should watch this and see where he puts the ball. He should put this right out in front of Quinton James, a little deep, kind of hard to get to. So he kicked away that possession. Oh, goodness. So the ball knocked on. That it turned out to be a pretty good uh, tactical play uh, by Carson. Now they get the set scrum just outside the 22. I suspect they're going to come right here. Probably a eight, nine feet. They got Quinton James out there at the 10 spot, so I think that's where the ball's going to go. That scrum is unsettled. They'll reset that scrum. U19 level and high school level age grade, the scrum can only be pushed one and a half meters and no more. So they got to reset that. Still Carson's ball. Killick Saxer is a the number nine putting the ball in here. And the penalty there was against the front row of Yale for collapsing. Carson taken full advantage by picking and going and through the A gaps. Still maintaining possession inside the 22. So they're making good yardage here. I, they may stay with this tactic until they can get stopped. And they're making three to four meters every time. So there they go again. They're getting closer. Rolling forward, looking for the tie here. Carson Graham, couple of feet there. Out to Gray. That was a great tackle there by the Dalen Livingston, the number one for Yale to stop him. And a turnover on the goal line, but a penalty. It looks like he's got a got offside. Offside there against Yale. So Carson, I would suspect, is probably going to kick to the corner and take the line out. But they may just tap and go, and there we go. Gone to the big man. Couple of hops there. Quentin James outside number four Luke Woodridge and straight up the middle there Gray yeah. goes and does it Carson Graham answering back to Yale's early try pretty good tactics just pick and go through the A gaps and uh, it's pretty hard to stop when you're you're only 10 meters out and cross that goal line three or four Good run hit ups there by the Yale forwards. Just a big body there using his strength. Taking on three other guys. Oh 
See a little congrats there from uh, Coach Glenn McKinnon. Works with the uh, Capilano Rugby Club as well, I understand. Yeah, he's the captain of their premier side. It's a hard man. Yes, he is. With a fantastic beard. There's the kick. We got ourselves a tie game here, approaching the 14 minute mark. There's a look at that try one more time by Nicholas Gray. Yeah, that was a good uh, camera angle there by the Shaw cameraman, had it right down. And here we go, fresh start, tie game. Carson Graham working it out here now. Back to Gray, he gets taken down. Now to the far side, Quentin James there. Gets back up, working his way. Turnover, Yale ball. Lions did well there. As Sashi Peterson, who's taken the ball on two or three times today, getting through that A gap. A lot of good rugby going on here today. There's uh, two or three other fields in action over there. Everybody playing their hearts out for the game they love. Good scrum by Yale, solid platform. Goes Byron again, tossing it over. Dejiani, the man who scored the try. Zuniga. Not releasing in the tackle. That hurts. Yale on the attack and turning it over, giving Carson an opportunity to get out of trouble, pound the field downfield, and take the line out, which is maybe to their advantage with a guy like Quinton in there. Seven seven tie here on Shaw TV's coverage with the BCSSRU. Triple A boys final. Thanks for joining us today. Little check in with the trainer there for Joey Meyer. Pretty nice conditions for a rugby game today. Slight breeze, not too hot. Fans are undercover in the shade. Fields in excellent condition. A championship. Just talking to Walt, the commissioner, he's very excited about grass fields too. This is great conditions for the, the type of field we're working on today. All right, well, we got a turnover again. Uh, ball not thrown straight, so Yale gets a, a choice here. They can have a line out or they're gonna take their scrum. So they're gonna take the scrum. They were a pretty strong platform last time. Had a nice 9-10 uh, nice combination going and uh, see what happens with this one. Peyton Alexander there, the number nine.
We got to mic the officials for the next one. I love when they have the referees mic'd up at the World Cup in uh, rugby. Oh, yeah. Chatter's a little fun. Here we go. Another solid platform. Alexander throwing that one out. This is where they beat him last time. There's a line break by Yale. There's some so space. A little show and go. Zuniga taken down. They get that one back up quickly, though. He's going to be penalized there for high tackle. Referee's playing advantage on that. Out to the far side, Raddins. Still working their way on, the Lions go. Alexander. Ooh. Bowen nearly lost it there, or Byron nearly lost it there. Yeah, defense came up pretty quick there. Sachi Patterson. Nice push there by Zimmer. Another penalty against Carson Graham. They got to get back 10. Let's see what Byron does here. He's, he's in range to take, take a shot at goal. It looks like that's what they've decided to do. Try and get the three points here. They called in their kicker. So he's going to take a shot. And Jaden Ned has uh, got an opportunity to put uh, put Yale out front here early in the game. Looking to regain the lead, would take them to 10. Just past the 20 minute mark of the first half. Seven right now for the Lions over the Carson Graham Eagles. Hometown, very happy with that. Five points kicking there for Jaden Ned so far. Conversion and the kick we just saw. Eagles looking to strike back here. Down by three. Working the ball out, there's Cole. Simon Cole going forward. Another line break. Little break there for Woodridge. Still moving forward. Yep. Hitting that A and B gap, they're gonna close that down. Close to the goal line, there he goes forward through the A-gap again. Back to Gray, he's a tank. Gives it over there to Woodridge. Getting awfully close. Another hit up, oh. Well, that's unfortunate for Yale, knocking on the door and they uh, knock the ball forward on the goal line. So Yale will take over possession with a scrum five meters from their goal line. Carson Graham with some good efforts there. They've got a man down right now on the field. Looks like he's holding his head. Got to be very careful today with head injuries and making sure we're uh, following protocol, making sure everybody's safe to play. Very much appreciate your help in this. Thank you. Hit injury assessments are uh, very important in this situation. 
and it appears that he's probably going to go off and take a little break and that's Simon Cole. Simon Cole heading off now. Couple of injuries. This is rugby after all. Yeah, we're a little more conscious of those head injuries these days. I remember when I played, the coach would hold up at four fingers. If you count, see four fingers, you were good to go. But I think uh, lawyers and uh, the medical profession has changed that uh, approach a little bit. Yeah, no, it's good to see uh, the athletes taking care of themselves, making sure they're okay. Yeah, that's for sure. Nobody wants to come off the field, and uh, but it's it's all about safety. Players' safety first. Oh, you can bet. Yeah, Simon Cole will get checked out if he is okay. I'm sure it's not the last we'll see of him. It's usually a 10-minute protocol. Um, hopefully, we'll see him back in action because he's been an impact player to date. Exactly. Hopefully, he's all right. Here we go. Back in play. The Yale Lions with it now. Mac James working it out. Still very close to the Yale line. Bit of a missed throw there. Yes, there was. Turn around to fire to somebody who wasn't there and it goes across the dead ball line. Scrum down. And Yale is under pressure. Carson Graham bench looked happy about that one. Let's see if they can make good on this opportunity. Well, I can see their number eight just picking up and hammering away at that A gap again. They've been pretty successful so far. Let's see what they do. They might even release the ball out to the backs, but I think they're going to have a go here. Here they come, working down to the near side. Ooh. Turnover. <laughs> Yale brought the horseshoes today. Get out of jail free card. Yeah, took the pressure off there. But it's not over, we've got a line out still in their end, still in the, what we call the red zone. Looks like um, they're probably going to go to their number eight in the middle of the line out, start working it back up field. Now we'll see if, let's see if Yale competes for this, defensively competes for this. They've got a big line out guy, Peterson, in the front there. If I was them, I'd throw that guy up in the air and see if they can take it away. Steal it. And he did. Good play. I think the referee's going to call offside, and he has. Uh, Carson's offside there. And they've had a few offsides. They've got to start taking less penalties here, and uh, he's giving up possession and letting Yale off the hook. Yale gets it up a ways. They're up 10-7 right now, approaching the end of the first half here. Triple-A boys final for BC Rugby Union. Just two and a half minutes left to go here in the first half. A lot of things can happen in two and a half minutes in this game. Yes, sir. All right, well, let's see if they're going to do the same thing. Compete for that ball at the front. Carson competed. Yale doing well in those line outs. There was a collision there. Some great defense by Carson there coming up fast on the doubles tackle. Held him up in the air. He can't get the ball down. He did. He got her down.
Yale finding themselves in a little trouble. Carson Graham with it now. Less than two minutes to go. Some nice moves there. Ryan Lescue. Yeah, he made that guy miss, didn't he? Referee singles, that ball is out. It's op open play. And turnover. <laughs> really good tackle there by Carson Graham, number two. Joe Riley. Less than a minute to go. Carson Graham working the way down right now. Lescue with it again. Or it's up to 17 there. Harfrey's playing advantage again. He's going to call a penalty for another high tackle on the Yale team. Big turnover. Time about to expire in the first half. In that situation, he would have asked the referee if uh, if I go to uh, touch here on this, will I still get the line out? If he would have not allowed him the line out, then he would probably have uh, just tapped and ran because of the clock has expired. But the referee is a sole judge of time. Final moments of the first half here. Carson Graham with the ball. Over to Gray. Yeah, they got to keep this ball in possession here. It turns over, the whistle will go for the half time, so Carson is still working it. Look a little disorganized right now. Everybody wants to get that hands on the ball. And a penalty. And I think he's probably going to. He's giving us some thought here. Good idea. He's going to take the points. See if he can go into the half of the tie ball game. That was a good decision by Killick Saxer, the number nine for Carson. Don't panic. Take a look at where you are. Take a look how much time's on the clock and what the score is. Kalex Saxer with a chance to tie here for Carson Graham. 10 7 Yale at the moment. Can he change that? Uh, just wide of the left post. Disappointment there for Carson Graham. They've still got a half left to play, though. So oh, he's he's going to let him take the kickoff here. There was a couple injuries, even though the clock ran down. Again, he keeps track of the time and injuries. He'll shut his clock down. So, uh, oh, and a Big block, block kick by number four for Carson Graham. Luke Woodridge. And a penalty. Woodridge with it here. Under pressure. It's a song, isn't it? <laughs> oh, he's going to give Did me the he get it. He does. He got it. Fantastic moves there. That was Joe Riley, I Joe. believe, getting the final move, getting the try. 
Joe's a uh, pretty timely play by Joe. He was a substitute that came on for the injured uh, Carson player earlier when Nicholas Gray went off. So he's taken full advantage of his playing time here. Working his way through a couple defenders. Coming up big for his boys. Hugs all around. Big end of the first half. Looking for those extra two in the conversion here. And there you go. A change of the lead. Killick Sacks are getting those extra two all of a sudden. Lead belongs to Carson Graham, 14 to 10. A lot of things can happen in the last couple of minutes. A lot of things can happen. Stay with us here on Shaw TV. We've still got lots of rugby left to go at the BC AAA Rugby Championships. Born in Liberia, they said I'd never walk, talk, read, or write. But their words, I took as just another challenge. I pushed past every doubter, every excuse, every obstacle that stood in my way. Help the Rick Hansen Foundation make Canada accessible for all. to do something that changes everything. Promise me one thing, Jake, that you will look after them all. I promise. There's a new world coming. My dad said that everything had already been discovered. Not everything, Jake. My name's Benjamin. I am an above-knee amputee. The war amp supports me. These are my legs from since I was born. This one is my first leg. It's the smallest one. It's really cute. The key tag money that people donate went towards the swim leg, and then now I can use it for uh, swimming and cross-country skiing and skating. It makes me feel good about myself to be able to do things that everybody else can do. Where you live. Shaw TV, your local voice. Welcome back to Abbotsford for coverage of the British Columbia Secondary School Rugby Union AAA Boys Final. We've got Carson Graham just taking the lead 14 to 10 over the hometown Yale Lions. Uh, thanks for tuning in here on Shaw TV. Paul McClellan with Paul Horn. We're going to take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. We saw a few tries there. Uh, Paul, what did you see in this one? Or Here's a couple of the highlights. First of all, maybe you can run us through them. Yeah, that was good execution of play by... Um the Yale Lions, where they just move the ball out wide and beat the defense, and uh, he turned the corner and showed good speed to touch down. First try of the game. Dejiani there with that first one. And there's their 9-10 combination there again, where they, I believe that was the, uh, their second try. And Nicholas Gray running like a tank for that one. Low and hard, right through the A-gap. Pretty hard to stop a man when he's that determined. And that was that late one by Joe Riley, just coming in, making the best of his opportunity, coming in for an injured player. Joe Riley making a big difference in this one. What did you see in that first one? I mean, what gave Carson Graham the advantage? Or, I mean, it really was an equal one, to be honest. It was pretty close. Um, there was a lot of turnovers, and uh, I was surprised that Carson's going in with a halftime lead, considering how many penalties they took. They. Mm -hmm. uh, they got caught offside and gave up some possession, and uh, and uh, so they're they're on top, and uh, should be second half. It should be all about uh, statistics. How many line breaks? How many um, defenders can you beat? How many times can you get across the gain line? How many passes and phases can you put together? And the team that does the better job of all of that is going to probably come out on top. Yeah, definitely making the most of the injury time at the end there was Carson Graham. Now let's throw things over. We've got the commissioner of the BCSSRU. 
All right, Commissioner, big event. We're here coming into the AAA final. We've already had the quadruple A final. Can you tell us just a little bit about how this tournament has gone? It's been great. We've got uh, teams from all over BC. We've got people from the Okanagan, the Kootenays. We've got Vancouver Island. We've got the Fraser Valley, of course, Vancouver and the North Shore. All over BC, kids coming, 36 teams strong, playing rugby, best game in the world. It's beautiful here in Abbotsford right now. You guys have done the tournament here before. What kind of relationship do you have with the folks here in Abbotsford? It's phenomenal. The people of Abbotsford, the city of Abbotsford in particular, are just so supportive. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you. This venue is world class. We have a professional grade stadium with four adjacent fields outside. There's no facility like it anywhere in BC that I'm aware of. And frankly, compared to the old days at Thunderbird Stadium at UBC, we're getting treated like gold. And uh, Thunderbird Stadium is turf now because somebody was short-sighted. There are more sports you can play on grass than turf and fewer injuries. And uh, our women's uh, soccer players had to file a lawsuit about the lack of grass facilities when the World Cup of Soccer was here. So I think we need more grass stadiums. The city of Abbotsford is progressive. They, they get it. Well, uh, we're going to see, or we are seeing, the AAA final. We've had the AA. Quad A uh, is a new addition. Can you talk about the growth of rugby in BC and the quality that we've seen with that addition of the extra level? Well, it's a great question. Um, what we try to do is balance the competitiveness, finding different levels. This is called merit-based play. We worked with a woman named Christine Bradstock, who was the executive director of BC School Sports, and her, her successor, Jordan Abney, has also been very supportive. We want teams to play at a comparable level so that you don't have mismatches. It's not perfect yet. We still have some challenges, and my team has faced it too. So um, we're working on it, and it's uh, exciting to see the sport growing for boys in particular, but girls as well. Now, we've, we're talking a lot about the boys today. We're covering the boys' stuff. Uh, I just heard you know, finals from uh, girls' sevens are out. The finals, uh, was it Yale that won the uh, girls' uh, final as well? Can you talk a bit about the girls are just right there with the growth as well? Absolutely. I mean, uh, 25 years ago, it didn't happen. And when the girls' rugby was happening, typically it was a male coach. There's still a lot of men coaching girls' rugby. But it's really nice to see so many young women coming through these programs, giving back to their old school, joining rugby clubs, part of that culture. It's also had a civilizing impact on rugby clubhouses around the world, I can tell you that. So I think it's exciting to see this sport growing for both men and women, and especially for kids at all levels. We've seen great growth with the secondary level, with the uh, club programs throughout the province. Lastly, I guess maybe can you give us a little plug if people want to find out more about the BCSSRU, where do they go? Sure, our website, uh, bcssru.com. That has a, a link to all the high school teams, all the different zones across the province. Plus there's links to Rugby Canada. Uh, a fellow named Doug Sturk has just written an incredible book called It's a Try, the History of Rugby in Canada. I mean, this thing is like an encyclopedia. And he's a, he's a walking encyclopedia, so there's a million links from the BC Secondary Schools Rugby Union website. Thanks very much, Walt, and enjoy the rest of the festivities today. Thank you, Paul. And we're back here for the second half of the final, AAA Boys Final. <coughs> Carson Graham with the ball right now. Woodridge with that last one. Working it over there to Joe Riley. Scored the late try for Carson Graham, giving them the lead. Fourteen ten right now the score for the Eagles out of North Vancouver. Hometown fan here, hometown fans here in Abbotsford cheering Yale on, but a good group of folks have made it down the highway from uh, North Van as well. And up Carson Graham go, trying to impress those fans. That Joe Riley again, taking it forward. Oh my goodness, they're putting some pressure on now inside the 22 meter line. And some good defense by Yale, forced a turnover inside and they're it's their turn to attack. Yale looking to take back the lead. Penalty there. Advantage Yale. Now they're probably going to call on Byron to get a monster kick out of here and go from a, being under pressure and defensive end to uh, into the attacking zone.
Much closer matchup than last year. Yale was up 12-0 after the first half, won that one 17-0. This looks like it'll be a close one right to the very end. <laughs> Big steal by Quinton James at the front of the line out. There goes Riley again. Nice moves there. Carson Graham working it down. Santiago. This is exactly where they were before they turned the ball over. It was Joe Riley again there. Working it the other way now. Quentin James. Almost another turnover there. There it is, knocked forward. So that's twice inside the 22 that they've done that. That may cost them. We'll see. Lots of time left. Just under 25 minutes to go here in the second half. Thanks for joining us here on Shaw TV. Fantastic matchup so far. 14-10, still the lead for Carson Graham. Mac James there. See if Yale's got an exit strategy here to get out of their own end. They do. Still inside their 22 though. Under a little pressure. This is where the coaches pull their hair out sometimes. You practice these things and you try and get them right and and you know they know what to do, but sometimes they just don't execute. Nicholas Gray there with a bit of a drive. There they go through the A gap again. And another turnover. Not releasing the ball in the tackle. That hurts. Jaden Ned there taken out. Not sure he wanted to get taken out there. He was trying to cut back in off the touch line and get a little space, but great defensive play there by Carson to knock him out of bounds. And uh, now they've got the line out. And another possession on the attack. Big take down there, Santiago going back. That was a really good tackle by Santiago. Forced to knock on. Yale gets the scrum. See, Joel's, Joe Riley's off and uh, Cole's back on, so that's good to see. Simon Cole back in at number one. Zimmer there, across to There's Dijani. a line. Great line break. Great line break. You're going to move that one outside. Dejiani over to Byron. Byron working his way ahead. Making noise down the field. Referee's playing advantage again. He's got his hands up. There goes Yale in the A gap. Oh, 
left here. Referee's blown his whistle here. His hand signal looked like a penalty, but not really sure. Yes, it is a penalty against Carson Graham. Yale possession, probably 10 meters from the goal line. Just about 10 minutes into the second half here, still 14-10 lead for Carson Graham over Yale. Triple A boys rugby final here in BC. Sun's coming out even more right now. I'm sure wreaking havoc on our uh, camera guys and crew in the truck. But it is a beautiful day for some rugby. Perfect conditions. Jaden Ned looking at a few more points onto the board for Yale. Bring them within one. There you go, 14-13, Yale only down by one right now. Yeah, those three points were all, all on, on Connor Bryan. Byron made a great line break there up the field and uh, they produced the ball and forced Yale into a position where they could take those three points on, on a penalty by Carson. So we've got a pretty good game going here. Fantastic team up there. It was Byron and Dejiani getting it over to him, setting up those points. The Ale still looking to get back their lead. Down by one though, it's a tight one. Here they come. Zimmer. That whistle's gone. Mishandled, knocked forward. Advantage goes to Carson for the scrum. Carson Graham looking for their fifth provincial title as a school for the boys. Yale trying to make the most trouble for them and taking their second uh, winners last year. That was a great tackle by Connor Byron out there to shut that down. Carson Graham still going forward. Interesting choice of that tactical kick. Uh, didn't work out too well. Gonna make that kind of kick down in there. You want to make a tactical kick like that, you need to put a lot more height on the ball so you have a chance of recovering it. And as a result, that rolled across a dead ball line, and now it's um, Yale's ball outside their 22. Big congratulations to the squads who have already already won the quadruple A and double A titles today. I believe we'll see some of the trophy ceremony after this one as well. Congratulations to some of the, the girls' sides as well. Oak Bay winning the uh, Rugby Sevens recently. Nice run there again by Byron.
Zimmer trying to work that one ahead. Side. Brandon Christian there. Nice run. Still maintain possession. Dejiani. Quick movement of the ball. Israelson. Dejiani, Zuniga, outside, Christian. Looking pretty dangerous out there. Christian finding all sorts of room on the near side. Back the other way, Peterson. Oh, Byron just couldn't grab that one. Turnover. He just he just uh, gave a yellow card to Byron. That is going to hurt Yale. Connor Byron has been a big big part of this team today and probably all season long but certainly has influenced the scoreboard here. Now he's off for 10 minutes. There goes their captain only 15 minutes remain in this one. Great work again by Christian here on the near side. Working it the other way now. Down the line they go, Radens. Nearly missed Mayer. It's a great sequence of play there, all by Christian. Christian made that line break down the side and uh, got tackled and lifted his legs up in the air so his feet would not be in, in the out of bounds. So good play by him. Fourteen thirteen, Carson Graham in the lead. Less than 15 minutes to go here in this second half. If you're BC Double S R U Triple A Boys Final. Oh, they Yale needs this kick right now. They need this kick to take the lead and uh, hang on for another seven minutes while Byron is off with his yellow card. He, he will see more action, but they're going to have to hold the fort until he's back on. Jaden Ned looking to add another few points to his total on the day. Oh, it's gone wide. Up comes Carson Graham. Turnover. Turnover going forward. Something you never want to do in rugby is lose the ball while you're going forward. So the pressure's on. Yale ball. Set scrum. Yeah. 
Zimmer throws it over. Finds its way to James. He's, in, he's having a good game today for Yale, taking that ball forward. And not releasing in the tackle. Another turnover. Penalties are becoming a factor in this game. Two guys in that uh, receiver zone, two halfbacks. We only have one guy in there. Everybody else got to be back 10. Big run coming here. Nicholas Gray. Little show and go. Open the gap, run right through. Head by Gemmel. Oh, dangerous kick. Joe Riley again. Joe Riley, four men on him. They're pushing it. Can they Tyler. finish it? Yes, they can. Carson Graham adding to that one point lead. Joe Riley once again, another try. He's had quite an impact on this game. So that's an extra five, taking them up to 19. They're looking for the extra two here as well to add on to that. A 21-13 lead would look pretty good with about eight minutes to go on the clock here in the second half. Saxer misses on that one. That could be big. Should Yale push back here? One score game now. 19-13, Carson Graham in the driver's seat. Seven minutes in the game. Well, I know Yale wants Connor Byron, Byron to get back in this game. They've not been the same since he came off. He'll be back out in uh, two or three minutes. Here they go. Riley again. That's James. There's Riley. Go forward, Joe Riley.
That was a good choice. Uh, go to touch. Carson Lino, five, six meters out. They haven't set their line out yet. Full line out. My money is just going to go right to James. Front of the line out. It looks like Yale's going to compete for it. They're going to put their jumper up, try and take it. Riley with a push there. Saxer. There's a tally. Quentin James. <laughs> Adding some insurance to the scoreboard. 24 13 right now. Looking to find a little more success on this conversion. A chance to double the Yale score. Killick Saxer back for the kick. You know, one of the statistics that in the game today that didn't used to be kept is meters gained. I don't know if we got that from football, but meters gained. And you know, Joe Riley's picked up a lot of meters going north and south today. Oh, yeah. Big contributor there. So no go on the kick. 24 13 right now. Carson Graham Eagles on top. The clock is ticking. Yale will do everything they can to make a go of this one here late. Byron's back on, they're both teams at full strength, 15 aside. Time is crucial at this point in the game. Good run started there. Zuniga. Over there to Raddins. Good numbers. Ooh. Couple of misses there on the passes. Israelson in trouble. Out of bounds. Turnover. down on the near side. Killick Saxer. Logan Israelson going off for Yale. New player coming on. Didn't get his number. So he probably will get some injury time at the end of this half as well. A limp for Saxer. Not the way he wants to go out, but his team with a bit of a lead. Cramping. If Carson Graham can hold on, this would be their first provincial title since 2008. School with a good history of success in rugby, but a bit, bit of a gap between titles. They'll be happy to get up there after a few through the last decade. Looks like he's good to go. Radden 
Bates taking a hit there. Oh, turnover. Carson Graham pouncing on that. There goes another one. He's in. Did he lose it, though, before he hit the ground? Referees called it back. 29. Wish we had a name. Not on the score sheet. Referee's touching, talking to his ARs and see if he can get some help on that call. Make sure he got it right. It's good to see all three of them working together. So we're now into extra time, past the 60 minute mark. Carson Graham thought they had the clincher there if they don't have it already. He's going to award the try after all that. It's good. 29 for Carson Graham on the board. Big finish there for them in this championship game. They look set to be the BC 2017 champions. Just a little bit of extra time left to play in this one. Yeah, it's good to see the referees working together like that. Referee had made a call, did, originally didn't allow the tally, the try, and uh, got together with his touch judges, ARs, and, and um, between the three of them, they determined that uh, the try was good. So that's always a good thing. Killick Saxer missed a couple of kicks. Didn't miss that one. No, sir. Oh, sir, he stepped up, made a great kick. 31-13, and there you have it. Carson Graham out of North Vancouver are your champions for 2017 AAA Boys Rugby in the province of British Columbia. Well, on the day, I think both teams played their hearts out after a long weekend of rugby, but uh, Carson showed they were the better team today. Even with the turnovers in the red zone, they still managed to put 31 points on the board. Full credit to Yale for sure, though. This was a one-point game late in the match, and 14-13 uh, quickly got away from them, but uh, nothing to be ashamed of there. They lost their captor, ca captain, Connor Byron, for a good chunk of that game late, that was probably a big factor in this one. Uh, but for sure, two very talented squads out there on the pitch today. Yeah, you, I agree there. Losing Connor was a turning point in the game. And one point and uh, being off for 10 minutes turned the game around. Full credit to both teams. Great day, rugby. Great sportsmanship. It's one thing I love about this game, Paul, is the, the great traditions of the game. You play your heart out like that, and when you walk off the field, it, whatever happened on the field, the game is over, and it's all about respect. Yep, all about respect. Lots of big games by lots of big players. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here on Shaw TV, wrapping up with the award ceremonies. Again, Carson Grant's here, 2017 BC Rugby AAA champion. Stay with us.
The Bill Reed Gallery is celebrating the Lifetime Achievement Award recipients of the BC Creative Achievement Awards for First Nations Art in their new feature exhibition, Hi Hun Yat Zam, running April 5th to September 5th. Presented annually by the BC Achievement Foundation, the awards recently celebrated their first decade of excellence. For more information about this exhibition and the Bill Reed Gallery, visit billreedgallery.ca. For more information and videos about the artists, visit bcachievement.com forward slash First Nations Art. Local TV that matters to your community. Shaw TV, your local voice. Welcome back to Rotary Stadium. We just saw the AAA boys final for rugby here in BC. Carson Graham taking the victory by a score of 31-13 over the hometown Yale Lions. Bit of a heartbreaker for them, but a great game for both squads. Now, Paul... It was a fantastic game. Were there any players that really stuck out to you that you want to make mention of uh, honorable mentions tonight? Oh, yeah. Both teams had some uh, stalwart players that made an impact in the game. We mentioned Connor Bra Byron a number of times yep. and his impact. He was a big part of their game and uh, seemed to be running their ship. And um, their their number eight, uh, Mac, was a very good player. Mac, Mac James, James was fantastic yes. tonight. He, yeah. he took the ball and went forward. And... Uh, uh, had a very strong game. Teo um, Deggiani as well was oh, pretty good out there. Yeah, yeah both their 9-10 combination it was very good. And Jaden Ned, uh, number 11 for uh, Yale, was also strong. Made good on his kicks, yeah. He did, and uh, and kept him in the game for probably two-thirds of the game. But then um, Carson Graham, I mean, Joe Riley, you got to talk about this kid coming into the game. couple of tries was fantastic out there just running through bodies. Joe Riley came off the bench. His, he put his hand up and says, Coach, I want in there. And he got in there, and he made a big, big impact right from right from his first opportunity and hands on the ball, just a lot of meters gained going forward. It was a, a very very good game, and he, he was a difference. I think he scored a couple of tries as well. Great try as well for Nicholas Gray, big body number one. Just looked like a tank out there. Where there were three or four bodies hanging off that guy at times, making the most of his strength and uh, scoring one of the tries as well for Carson Graham. Yeah, when you run that hard and, and uh, that low, it's pretty hard to get under it. And the old adage about uh, low man wins, well, he certainly was a low man and he got the try. So, yeah, it was impressive stuff. Uh, great effort by both teams. So as we're getting ready here for these trophy presentations, maybe just tell us a bit, Paul, what did you see as the big difference tonight? Why did Carson Graham take it? Well, I think they they made better opportunities uh, and created uh, scoring opportunities and and finished and uh, they didn't they turned the ball over quite a bit, which was surprising. But at the end of the day, uh, they crossed that line more uh, than their opposition Yale. Um, their scrummage was solid. Their lineouts were solid. They had a guy named Quinton uh, James playing number eight that was uh, all over the field. He was running the ball. He was dominating the lineouts, solid in the set piece, making big tackles, and a significant uh, player out there. Just So, uh, yeah, I think that was a big factor in it. Big factor in this game. Carson Graham coming up big again. They've got a history of this. 1996, 2002, 2006, 2008. Well, you can add 2017 into the mix on that list. 
Yes, Carson Graham's got a proud history in rugby, and uh, and they just. I look out here and I see all these teams assembling before the uh, medal ceremonies, and I look at how many coaches uh, I used to coach when I was uh, at Samuel Secondary School and with the BC team and the Canada team, and a lot of these guys are now giving back and and uh, coaching the teams, and it's really a neat thing to see. And I don't think it happens in a lot of sports. These guys are volunteers, and and uh, makes it a big impact on and uh, why this game is getting so much better in this country. Oh yeah, we should throw out a huge thanks to the coaching staffs and ta staffs that work with these teams in general, everyone that made this event possible. It's been a fantastic uh, tournament and all the top teams from BC in here. It's been great working with you. Thank you again for joining our team as well, Paul, this weekend. I know you uh, coached with Semiamu. While you were doing that, I was going to school and writing about rugby down the road uh, as an Earl Marriott student. So it's nice to sort of bridge those yeah. <laughs> enemy yeah. territories yeah. and work together yeah. awesome. as crosstown rivals awesome. from South Surrey. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a great game, and it uh, tends to bring people together. And you can see the smiles on these guys' faces out there. They get over their losses and uh, move on and, and uh, enjoy the memories because uh, not everybody gets to play a sport like this and, and it really is, in my mind, this is the game that every kid in Canada wants to play. They just don't know it. And we're talking, well, tons of scholarships that have been rewarded over the last 20 years or so to athletes out of BC in rugby. Some of these guys, that was the end of their high school rugby career. Where, where do they go next? Well, that, you know, and, that, and that's uh, something I was talking about with the coaches earlier. Some of them are going to UBC. Some of them are going to University of Victoria. There are just not enough good university programs in Western Canada. There's not a lot of choices. Uh, one of the players from uh, Carson's going to go to Simon Fraser, mm -hmm. uh, but we need more university programs. Rugby Canada, and they should be out there putting, making sure that we have varsity programs like UBC and UVic at University of Fraser Valley, at uh, Thompson River up in Kamloops, uh, Vancouver Island University, and expand this game. Give these kids a chance to go on and play at university. It's happening in the states, big time, and it needs to happen here. And uh, uh, when that happens, our growth is even going to be more significant. I was going to say a lot of our talent ends up south of the border. A friend of mine from school wound up at the University of Utah on a scholarship. You get guys that wind up in the States, but it would be great to see a buildup of the Canadian rugby scene because we do have a great tradition. And we've even seen with international tournaments, rugby union as well as rugby sevens, Canada is becoming a force known around the world. Yeah, we need more options though for these kids. and. Uh, you know, a lot of these kids will go and play uh, two or three sports in high school and somebody from lacrosse or somebody from baseball or hockey will come along and offer them a full ride to go somewhere. That's pretty attractive. But many of these kids, they had the same opportunity in rugby to, to get that full ride somewhere. They would take that. But those opportunities are few and far between. We need more of them. Now we're just seeing some of the medals awarded down uh, on the pitch. Let you listen in a little bit to the crowd noise down there and the announcements being made. So in the double in the keeper flag and the Beable Shield for first place, we place out the copy of St. Michael's. the banner for the boys double a rugby title 20, 2017 that one going to st michael's
Quincy uh, with the rugby program for a number of years, a couple of years. How have you seen the growth of the sport throughout the province in uh, the past little bit? I think the biggest growth is in the quality of the play, the skills that these guys are, are able to perform at. But, you know, that, that's a result of the coaching. And a lot of times uh, uh, a, a good program can get excellent coaching and that team can really, really perform as a result of it. So to me, I look around at the, the programs out there. Um, I'm not sure there's any more programs there were when I was last involved in high school rugby, which was 2002, 2003. But the, the biggest difference is the quality of play. And uh, that's, it goes all the way down to uh, the junior high as well and, and the grade eights. And kids are starting at an earlier age and getting better coaching. It's not just a teacher in the school sponsoring the team. They're actually getting some very good coaching. So uh, the result is here. We saw some pretty good games being played today at a very high school level. Definitely fantastic finals. And all the rounds leading up to it, some really good rugby, some tight matches. Couple of blowouts, but those happen every now and again, but fantastic skill amongst all the teams involved. There's Earl Marriott now, familiar jersey for me. Yeah. They, are, uh, they got a great program, a couple hundred kids playing at that school, coached by two of my former players from Semiamu, Adam Roberts and uh, Bryn Johnson. Both played for me in the uh, up 2000, 99, and Bryn was 96. Took him to Australia, he was on our BC High School Championship mm -hmm. team in 95, and uh, so it's really cool to see those guys continue to give back and produce uh, great opportunities for these guys to play this game. Are we seeing a lot of BC boys winding up on the national squad as well? Yeah, absolutely. Not as not as many as before because the game has also uh, gotten a lot better in mm -hmm. places like Ontario. Mm -hmm. And Sask Saskatchewan's contributing players. Alberta's contributing players. Newfoundland has made a big impact on uh, rugby in Canada. So it used to be dominated by BC players. Not so much anymore. Uh, still plenty of them, but... Uh, the other, the other provinces are producing quality players that are surfacing at the national level as well, at all age groups, both men and women. Yep, that's uh, key as Canada tries to work their way up. In the standings, national, international rankings. Just watching a little bit more of this presentation. Hey, come on forward, gentlemen. St. George is there receiving their medals. Proud of their coach. He was one of my students as well. One of my players played number eight for me in high school. And went on to you, Vic. Mike Stiles has done an awesome job there. St. George's. Hopefully the uh, the Vancouver newspapers pay attention to this and give some, this sport some good coverage and this event some good coverage. Uh, they do a great job, uh, especially the province and, and the Sun, but uh, they need more. They need to dedicate more time to high school sports, and, and uh, this is a great event, so hopefully they'll pick up the paper and see this well reported and with the results and some write-ups and some pictures. Hint, hint, there you go, local uh, nudge, nudge. papers and the big ones. Uh, it is interesting to see the attention sometimes that uh, sports in the U.S. at this level get versus Canada, 
publicity can come in big. I, I was just on a road trip down in the States for a couple of weeks, and you turn on the radio, and you've got local baseball of, uh, you know, teenagers playing, and they've got the broadcast going. So, you know, yep. BCHL gets a little bit of that, but uh, we need to sort of look outside because there's a lot of great young Canadian athletes playing sports other than hockey, which sure. is a great sport. But uh, great to see this rugby game on TV today as well. Yeah, hats off to Shaw for uh, making that a priority to cover this game. Hopefully all the parents have got it taped and when is this going to be broadcast? We'll throw this up on uh, YouTube as well so you can watch the replay. But uh, the broadcast, if you're watching first time, is Saturday evening. We will also air this again uh, tomorrow morning on Sunday, 9.30 a.m. So you can watch it a couple times on TV and then uh, look to the Shaw TV YouTube channels out of Vancouver. Uh, to watch it as many times as you want. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those other websites that I only use a couple of. But, uh, you know, get the kids to share it on their Snapchats and such. Spread the word. There you go. Spread the gospel. we got St. Paul preaching the gospel of rugby. Is that what we got going on right now? Absolutely. That works for me. The Pauls running the broadcast here tonight. Paul Horn's been fantastic, my color man tonight. Watching now here as Carson Graham collects their banner. And there's Walter filling in the other side of the photo, our commissioner getting in on the picture. He's a great volunteer of the game, puts in a lot of time, very dedicated guy. Carson Graham again, you just watched it, or if you're tuning in late, Carson Graham took the win 31 to 13 over Yale. Eagles with an impressive second half. At one point it was 14-13 and they just took over late in the matchup. Yeah, all that happened in the last 10 minutes. You know, these games uh, were 60 minutes today and uh, uh, it's the last 10 minutes in a 60 minute game that really counts and that was the difference when those guys put a couple extra tallies on the board and uh, pulled away with a 31-13 victory. The game is 60 minutes long, sometimes it's 70 minutes long, but you get to play the whole time. You can't take any time off. And, and uh, you know, it showed, showed the difference today. The 14 against 15 was a big factor where uh, Yale was playing a man down. Definitely, and yeah, I was gonna say as well, 70 minutes, you add another 10 minutes onto this one, who knows what could have happened in that last 10 minutes uh, with the return of Connor Byron, but uh, not to take anything away from Carson Graham, they were absolutely fantastic uh, throughout the game, but especially there in that last uh, 15 minutes or so, especially. So again, a big thanks to all of the athletes, a big congrats to all the athletes, especially Carson Graham, who we just saw take the victory there, 31-13, the final score. All the staffs, families involved in this, the organizers, it's been a great week of contests in rugby for BC. Uh, big thanks to Paul Horn for joining me as well. I'll give you the handshake there. All right, there. Paul, thank you. <laughs> thanks for inviting me. It's, uh, it was a good day. Enjoyed it very much. I'm glad you enjoyed it as well. That is it for us tonight uh, in Abbotsford. Again, 31-13 the final. Carson Graham, your 2017 AAA Boys Rugby Champions in BC. On behalf of the whole broadcast team, Paul Horn, myself, Paul McClellan, thank you. And we are signing off on Shot TV.